Hey, Keeble Cubs, Mrs. Hoffer here for today's English language knowledge lesson. Friends, after today's lesson, you will know basic facts about kings and queens. You will understand the multiple meanings of the word rules, and you'll be able to demonstrate an understanding of the tier three word royal. Friends, today we're going to be learning about kings and queens. Can you tell me what you already know about kings and queens? What are some interesting things that you might already know about kings and queens, Keeble Cub? Let me know. Good job, friends. Friends, just like a teacher is the leader of our classroom and the president is the leader of our country, in the United States, some countries in the world have leaders called kings and queens. Kings and queens are different leaders from teachers or presidents because they are not hired or elected. Instead, they are born into special families called royal families. A king is a man from a royal family who is the leader of a country. And if we know that a king now is a man from a royal family who is the leader of a country, who do you think a queen is? That's right, Keeble Cubs. Good job. A queen is a woman from a royal family who is the leader of a country as well. Friends, the children of kings and queens are called princes and princesses, and they may one day grow up to be kings and queens themselves. Kings and queens in the royal families live quite differently than everyday people like you and I live, Keeble Cubs. Friends, many different countries in the world have been ruled by queens, kings and queens at some point or another. Long ago, many countries had kings and queens, but now fewer countries have kings and queens. We live, if you see here on the map of the world, in the United States of America, which is right here, this country right here that I'm circling, Keeble Cubs. And right up here, Keeble Cubs, is the country um, Great Britain. Great Britain is one country that still has a king and queen today. So this is the queen and um, her husband of Great Britain today. This is Queen Elizabeth who some of you might have heard of before. Friends, is the man who was a royal leader of a country a king or a queen? That's right, he's a king. And what about the female who's a leader of a royal country? What did we learn she was called? That's right, Keeple Cubs, she's a queen. Friends, now it's time for today's read aloud. Today we are going to be reading a story called what are kings and queens? After today's read aloud, friends, you will identify details about kings and queens from the text and images, and you'll be able to demonstrate an understanding of the tier three word royal. Friends, make sure to listen very carefully to hear all about European kings and queens from long, long ago, including the places they lived and all the different royal things that belong to them. Let's get started. Look at this fancy building. What do you think this building might be used for, Keeble Cubs? Can you believe this building's actually someone's house? Well, it's not just any house. It's a palace. This palace used to belong to the Queen of France. What do you think it's like inside, friends? It must be nice if it was built for a queen. In fact, this palace has 440 rooms inside. As the leader of their countries, kings and queens often have the biggest and best homes in all the land, known as palaces or castles. As the leader, the king or queen rules a particular area of land and the people who live there. Friends, when we hear the word rules here, we mean when a king or queen leads and makes decisions about a particular area of land and people who live in that area of land. This area of land is called the kingdom. But friends, rules can also mean other things such as a set of directions or how to complete something. 
There used to be many, many kingdoms in the world's cable cubs. Today, however, there's not as many kingdoms or kings and queens as there used to be. Cable cubs, can you tell me about this picture? Who do you think this person might be on the page? And why do you think this person might be that person? Is there something on the page that you see that might give you a hint? It's good to be king. That's an old saying. And if you look at this king, whose name was King Richard II of England, you begin to get the idea of why this saying holds true. If you walked into a palace in England hundreds of years ago and saw this person, you wouldn't have any trouble guessing he was king. As the most important and powerful people in their kingdoms, kings and queens always got the best of everything. The best houses, the best clothing, and the best food. Kings did not have to say please and thank you. They didn't even have to dress themselves. They had servants to do that for them. Kiwa Cub servants are the men or women who are hired and paid to take care of the king and queen, as well as their home and land. Pretty much everything a king or queen used, touched or owned, was called royal. Friends, if something is royal, it belongs to a king or queen. The soft, fluffy robes King Richard II wore were the royal robes. The cup he drank from was called the royal cup. And if it was royal, that meant only the king, queen, or someone in the royal family, such as his daughter, the princess, or his son, the prince, was allowed to use it. King Richard II is holding two things in this picture. In one hand, he's holding the royal orb, and in the other, he's holding the royal scepter. These were ceremonial objects or things that the king wore or held just to remind people that he was in charge. That hat he's wearing is called a crown, which is no ordinary hat. Crowns were usually made out of some kind of precious metal like gold or silver and decorated with fancy jewels like rubies and emeralds and sapphires. These jewels were called crown jewels. Like the scepter and the orb, the crown was an important symbol of the king's power. Friends, a symbol is something that represents or stands for something else. When people say they, the king's crown, they knew that this person who wore it was powerful and important. So the king's crown symbolizes power and importance. Here's a close-up picture of a crown. It's made of gold and loaded with fancy pearls and other jewels. A hat like this would not be good for keeping the sun out of your eyes, and it wouldn't be good for keeping your head warm either. But if you were wearing it, it meant that you were the king or queen, the ruler of the kingdom. A few hundred years ago, it would have been nice to be a king or queen ruling your own kingdom, making all the rules and laws that people had to follow, but it would also have been very difficult. Kings and queens have big responsibilities. Every day, people came to them to ask for money or advice, and every day they had to make important decisions about things that were happening in their kingdoms. A famous king named Charlemagne was so important that an artist made a stained glass window with his image. This is um, the picture of the stained glass window, friends, that we see up here of Charlemagne. Look at his fancy chair. The king's chair was also called a throne, and as you might imagine, only the king was allowed to sit there. His throne was raised up on a platform so he could appear tall and important even when he was sitting down. What's that in his hand? Charlemagne is holding a sword and an orb to remind people that he is king. Over the next couple of weeks, you will learn more about kingdoms, kings, queens, and everything having to do with royalty. The end. Cable Cubs, what is in this picture? Can you tell me what we learned is in this picture here? 
That's right, friends. In this picture, we see a palace, which is home to the king, queen, and or their family. Good job. Friends, now look at the next two pictures. What do you see in these two pictures we have on the screen, friends? That's right. Here we see pictures of two kings we learned about. We see their royal objects, like their scepter, their orb, their sword, and their crowns. There's many different things that we see in this picture. Friends, what did we hear about? Are kings and queens still around today? What do you think? That's right. We learned that, yes, there are still kings and queens around today, but far less than there were many years ago. Good job, Cubs. And friends, what do you think are good things about being a king or queen? What are some beneficial um, aspects, some positive outcomes of being a king or queen? What do you think? What did you learn about in the read aloud? That's right, friends. Some of the answers could be that they um, pretty much get anything they want. They have the best food. They have the nicest jewelry. But they also do have a lot of responsibilities to make sure that their kingdom stays safe. Good job, Keeble Cubs. Friends, in the read aloud, you heard pretty much everything that a king or queen used, touched, or owned was called royal. Say the word royal with me. Royal. Good job. Royal friends describes anything that belongs to a king or queen or other members of their family, such as the prince or princess. An example of how we can use royal is the queen's jewels are her royal jewels because the jewels belong to the queen. Friends, can you tell me about something that you think might be royal? Try to use the word royal when you tell me about it. Pause the vid video and let me know of something you can think of that might be royal. When you respond to me, friends, try to say the king's or the queen's blank is royal because and tell me why. Good job, cuds. Friends, can you tell me what's the word we've been talking about? That's right, friends. We've been hearing about the word royal. Good job. Friends, for our next activity, I'm going to name some things belonging to a certain person. If the things I name, um, the things I am naming belong to a king or queen or their family, you say the blank is royal. If not, you say blank is not royal. Remember to answer in complete sentences. The king's throne. That's right, Keeble Cubs, good job. The king's throne is royal. My sister's coat. Good job, Cubs, that's right. My sister's coat is not royal. The queen's crown. That's right, Cubs, good job. The queen's crown is royal. The prince's dog. That's right, Keeble Cubs. The prince's dog is royal because the prince is the son of a king and is therefore royal too. Good job. And finally, my cousin's necklace. Is my cousin's necklace royal or is it not? That's right, cubs. My cousin's necklace is not royal. Good job. Friends, in the read aloud, we heard, as the leader, the queen or king rules over a particular area of land and the people that live there. When we hear the word rules here, it means to lead and make decision. Friends, we can also hear rules meaning other things. Rules can also mean directions or for something, um, directions on how to do something, like play a game. Friends, what sound do you hear at the end of the word rules? That's right. At the end of the word rules, 
we hear the z, this sound, the rules. And friends, when we hear this sound, the z sound at the end of the word or a noun, it means it's more than one rules is more than one rule or it's plural. So the s sound added to the end of the word indicates and tells us that there is more than one rule. All right, Keeple Cubs, that's all the time we have for today's lesson. Keep up the fantastic work.